Hey guys, Alex Sutherland here. You may know me as a sud from Card Runners or as the creator of GTO Range Builder. And today I am here to make a new tutorial slash demo video on Simple GTO Trainer. This is a piece of software that I've been working in conjunction with the Simple PostFlop creators on that lets you load GTO uh, solutions into a interactive environment where you can play against uh, the solutions, get real-time feedback on where your play deviates from GTO, where you're playing in line with GTO, how you should have played hands better, and also get aggregate reports on, you know, does your C-betting range compare, contain too many top pair hands relative to GTO, or are you check raising too low a frequency? Is your check raise composition slightly off? All sorts of real-time feedback like that that is currently not easily available through any other source. So. The program is at this website here. I will put the link in the description and you can download it, go through the install wizard and launch it. And I'll be going through the setup and usage from that point on. When you first load up the program, you'll see a screen like this. If you don't have a simple post flop account already, you'll need to click the sign up link. You just put in your name or sorry, email and password and you're good to go. I already have an account, so I'm just going to go ahead and enter that information here and sign in. So once you're signed in, you're ready to use the program. I'm going to start by showing the training packs tab. These are pre-computed, ready to go uh, training scenarios that you can do with no setup. They're just ready to play. And there are two game modes in GTO Trainer currently. The first is drill mode and the second is regular mode. In drill mode, you repeatedly practice the same situation over and over. So it might be defending against C-bets as the big blind after a button preflop raise in a six max cash situation. And this will be against a half pot C-bet here. And you just get dealt hands, your opponent C-bets at you and you react over and over and over. And GTO Trainer will give you real-time feedback on your hand by hand play, specifically would GTO fold that hand to a C-bet or not, as well as session level feedback about your range composition. So what's your overall calling frequency? How many strong hands do you call with? How many strong hands do you raise? What is the balance of those two ranges? And how does that relate to GTO? Regular mode, rather than practicing a specific action, you actually pick a post-flop situation, like uh, say, after you've raised pre-flop as the cutoff and get flatted by the big blind, and you play out the entire post-flop hand from start to finish. You'll play the flop, turn, and river. And you can choose to be either player, so you could play this scenario out as the cutoff or as the big blind. So for now, I'm gonna give a demo of a drill. I'm gonna open up this button versus big blind uh, C-bet defense drill, click play. And here we go. So I am out of position. I've been CBIT at a monotone flop. Um, and I'm choosing my action frequencies. So I can double click to make it a pure strategy where I always fold. If I think it's a hand I should mix with, I can drag these sliders to set mixing frequencies, or I can adjust it with these plus and minus buttons. So this is a fold. I'm going to go ahead and click check that submits. And then it'll tell me that this hand was correct, the correct action was to fold, and it takes me right into the next hand. And the idea is that you can play a lot of these very quickly and practice your CBA defense. So next I'll show what happens when we make a mistake. Here I'm going to call this hand, it should be a fold. And as you can see, it says incorrect, takes me to the next hand, but then I can click to go back and view the EV loss of the action that I took and see what the correct action was. So I'll play a few more hands here, and then we can look at the uh, summary screen and go from there. So this is one where it said a mixing error. Um, sometimes GTO raises. I chose to always call. It mostly calls. This is definitely one where we would mix between calling and raising. So I'm going to try and set that. Something like that. Got it about right. If you're within like 10% uh, of the GTO frequency, it will say you are correct. And mixing errors don't have any view loss uh, that is significant. It'll be kind of part of the calculation error of the GTO approximation, but you can treat that as zero. Um, but if you're having mixing errors regularly, that will mean that your ranges will be unbalanced, and we'll see that in the session summary screen. Okay, so I paused the video to play 50 hands so that we would have some nice data to see in our drill summary here. Now the first thing the drill summary shows is a list of all the hands you played. I um, went through 50 hands, made a few mistakes on purpose so that we could kind of see those show up in this chart. And you can just scroll through the hands and see which ones you got correct, which ones you got wrong, etc. 
So let's look at these charts. The first chart that's the simplest to understand is this middle one, and it just shows the overall action frequencies that you took each action with and what GTO action frequencies would have been if a GTO player had been dealt the exact same hands that you were dealt. So as you can see, I call a little bit too little, I fold a little bit too much, about a 5% error, and then I raise just a little bit too little. So the red is you, the green is GTO. This is another useful chart, it just shows you what percentage of the time you chose the correct action, what percentage of the time you chose an action that actually results in EV loss against a GTO opponent, and what percent of the time you just had a incorrect mixing frequency between various actions. This is an error that an opponent might be able to exploit, but that a GTO opponent would not gain EV against. Next, let's look at this top right chart. This shows my EV loss over time. So every time you take a non-GTO action against a GTO opponent, you're going to lose some EV. And this shows that EV loss over time. As you can see, over 51 hands, I lost about 4.6 BBs. So this would be like a negative 9 BB per 100 uh, compared to what GTO would achieve. And this big one was a on-purpose mistake. But even before then, you can see I was kind of gradually losing EV, making a bunch of small mistakes. And when you evaluate your own play, you'll probably see a graph like this or, or worse. This is actually pretty good and takes some practice to achieve. Um, now let's take a look at this top left chart. This is one of the most useful charts. It shows you the range composition with which you're taking each action. So this column here, for example, says that the top row is GTO, the bottom row is me, and it says that GTO uh, th raises its trips on the flop, check raises, with about 70% seven, uh, flat, 31% raise, and I did it two thirds, one third. So I played almost exactly GTO with my trips. And it lets me isolate the parts of my range where I'm actually deviating from GTO significantly. So the most obvious one is down here with my gut shots. I'm folding them two thirds and calling about one third with a little bit of raising. GTO folds about one third, calls about 60% and raises the rest. So I'm playing my gut shots uh, more passively and folding them most, more often. And that's where most of the EV difference is coming from. I have a few uh, different plays kind of when I have nothing and ace high. And then I just left a random action in here by accident with third pair. I forgot to set an action. So that is why my third pair stats look a little funky here. So that is the drill summary page. And you can always go look at that again by going to the sessions tab here. And it will track your sessions. You can see if you've been improving over time and you get a graph. Uh, the You kind of can get aggregated range distributions over multiple sessions. You can filter your sessions by uh, do all sorts of stuff here. So that is a drill. Next, I want to quickly show off a regular game. I'm going to focus on cut, cut off versus big blind single raise pots. And I will go ahead and play this. And here, rather than picking action frequencies, I am just picking what to do with a specific hand. Um, in this situation, I'm out of position. It's my first action. I'm going to check. And I get bet at. I'm going to go ahead and check raise this. And as long as I don't make a mistake, it'll just let me keep playing out the hand. I'm going to go ahead and barrel this turn. And on this river, I don't know, I guess I'll uh, check and give up here probably. No, oh, it says the best action was to bet. I should have shoved. And it tells me the EV loss, which was quite large here. So this lets you actually play out full hands like this. You'll still get the same summary screen. It's only going to show it with two hands here because I haven't actually played yet. Um, but this is a way for you to practice playing out not just the flop, but also the turn and river. And you can select down here if you want to play uh, from a random position. So as you saw last time I was out of position, now I'm in position. Or if you want to practice your, in your out of position play repeatedly, you can switch and that will take effect for the next hand. So that is the basic training packs functionality. I'm going to wrap up this video here and I will make a second video on some of the more advanced features around custom games, how you can create your own scenarios like these to train against, and all sorts of good stuff like that. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.